We're never going to run out of minerals. We just aren't. If you want to understand why, then this is the video for you. I'm Nick Tate. I'm a geologist and I've spent 30 years out looking for mineral deposits. So I have a reasonable understanding of how many there are and how likely they are to run out. I've also spent 30 years explaining to people why we're not going to run out. So instead of doing that again and again, I'm just going to make a video. Hardly a week goes by without some doom and gloom report in the media about what are we going to do when we run out of copper or lead or zinc or some other commodity. But it just isn't going to happen. So here's a quick summary of a few reasons why the doomsayers are on the wrong track. And when you get cornered by one at a party, you can counter their arguments with some of these. The first and most obvious proof is that we've never run out of anything. The simple reason is that demand, supply and price all balance each other out and if there's more demand people will find more minerals and if the minerals get short the price will go up and that will reduce the demand. It's a simple balance and it has no end. The second reason is that geology is fractal. That is to say the closer you look the more detail you see. Ore deposits aren't some vault underground filled with ingots of copper and when you dig them out they're all gone. It just doesn't work like that. Copper and lead and zinc and all the other minerals are distributed randomly through the earth's crust. There's a little bit more here, a little bit less there and a lot less over there. And there is no hard boundary to those deposits. The boundary to an ore deposit is simply an economic cutoff. The grade below the cutoff can't be mined because it doesn't make money. There's still copper there, but it's just not profitable. Inside the boundary, it's profitable and you can dig it out today. But tomorrow, the price might change. If the price goes up a little bit, then that boundary moves out and you can mine more copper. If the costs go down, for example, if a new technology comes along that reduces the cost of extracting the copper from the rock, then again that boundary can move out. And that will happen all over the world in the thousands and thousands of deposits that have already been mined and those that haven't been mined because the grade simply isn't quite high enough at the current price or with the current technology. So there's an enormous reserve all over the world around existing deposits both mined and not yet mined, let alone the ones that are yet to be discovered. And that's true for almost all minerals. So it doesn't matter whether we're talking about copper, lead, zinc, gold, diamonds or whatever. They all follow that same basic rule of fractal geology and economics. This place here is a classic example of what I've been talking about. This here is an iron deposit but it's not yet an ore deposit. It's actually got a drilled out resource and it would be ready to mine, except that the grade is a little bit too low and the current processing technology isn't quite right for this deposit. It would only take a small change in the iron price or some political disruption or a virus to upset the world supply chain and all of a sudden this would be an ore deposit and it could be mined. So there will never come a day when we simply run out of iron. It isn't a cliff over which we will fall, it's a long process and it has no end. The third key reason is the enormous complexity of the process from exploration through discovery, development and ultimately to a mine. That's an extremely complex process requiring an awful lot of moons to align before you get to that final stage of an actual operating mine. Almost all projects fall over somewhere along that staircase and they're just sitting there ready to be mined but they're stuck for one reason or another. It might be a government that doesn't want it to happen, local communities that are resistant to mining, owners who don't have the capital, resources or expertise to develop it, or a dysfunctional tenure system that doesn't encourage people to 
do something or drop the ground. Any one of those things can stall a project and leave it unable to be turned into a mine. When the price goes up or the demand goes up sufficiently, those roadblocks can get pushed out of the way and those deposits can become mines. There are literally thousands of deposits all over the world that are stuck just like that for one reason or another and they will become mines if we run short of anything. And finally, there's the process of exploration and discovery itself. I remember at school back in the 1970s, my geography teacher confidently told me that we'd discovered all the copper deposits that were to be discovered and that we're in the process of mining them and we would run out of copper before the year 2000. Well, it's now 2020, we haven't even looked like running out of copper and in fact, huge new discoveries have been made on a pretty much annual basis since he said those words. Why that happens is a complex interplay of different factors. A lot of it's to do with perception. There are none so blind as those who will not see. And if you go out looking for copper deposits on the assumption that all of the ones at surface have been found, you're pretty sure you won't find any. But there's always a cadre of people with some hope and new ideas and sometimes new technologies that will find more deposits, even in places that have been looked at before. I've had that experience myself and I know it happens. Just because 10 people have walked over something before, it doesn't mean it isn't there. It just means it hasn't been recognised for what it is. Now, human population is still increasing at an exponential rate, but we'll never just run out of anything. The price will simply go up as the demand increases and the supply struggles to keep up. As a result, we'll simply use less of those things and find other ways to do what we want. The supply of fresh water and arable land are far more likely to be limiting factors on the human growth curve than the supply of minerals. So there you go. We aren't going to run out of minerals anytime soon. And the next time someone collars you at a party and tells you confidently that we're going to run out of copper in the next 10 years or whatever, you can tell them to their face, you're lying. You don't know you're lying, but you're lying.